1971 to 73 Ford Bronco. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another 1970s model car review as today we look at another car loaned to us by our good friend James. Actually this is an off-road vehicle but anyway this is a cool kit from Ravel. I'm sure you're gonna love to build it. There are basically two versions of this thing currently on the market. It is a relatively new kit so there isn't very many going back on the old box arts and whatnot but we can still have a quick look. So let's do that and then we will take a look at what's in the box. And now we go back to the woods with our 1973 Ford Bronco. A great little camping trip, a great little vehicle. These Broncos were made from 1966 until 1977 where they ended up with a redesign for going into the 80s. But today we are looking at another one of these great model kits that James has shared with us. Still sealed, so I'm going to open up that factory seal in just a minute. Now if we look on the side of the box here, we get some details onto this Ford Bronco. You get a length of 6 and 3... 6.375 inches. Alright. 137 parts molded in white water slide decals. There's a history of it all. It's got a detailed 289 cubic inch engine, V8 again, swing away spare tire, removable hardtop molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and soft black tires. This kit came out in 2016 so it's nice to again get new releases or new-ish releases although this is now four years old but still I've only seen one other reissue in this with our box arts. Here's all our paints we'll need. Aluminum, dark blue, flat black, uh, gloss light blue, red, semi-gloss black, semi-gloss white, silver steel, transparent red, and turn signal amber. So get ready to go get some paints out there. As we turn it up we see again the front is the same as the back kind of thing. Or whatever. <laughs> the sides are the same as the top. Okay, but there's our built model. You can see this amazing, this is what it's like with the top off. You get your windows up top as well as the front windshield and the hood off. And then there's our undercarriage and the swing away tire, the ghost tire. Woo <laughs> and then there's what it looks like once you get the top and everything on. Very much like the artwork on the front. Zooming back, get the end of the box there again. And we check out the lid. Now this is kind of cool. Just zoom in on this part before we continue. See that dome tent? My parents had one just like this we used to camp in. Same green with the yellow top and everything. Of course it uh, decomposed in the sun. Right after the High River Flood we set it up in the backyard here and was storing some stuff in there and well the old canvas couldn't take it anymore. So anyway here we go. Cutting open James model here. Mm. Wish to thank my friends for helping me out. Uh, hang on. Yeah, let's cut this a little more. I get by with a little help from my friends. I sing old Beatles songs. No help at all. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Nice tight fit on the box lid. I'm glad this isn't the flip top or valve lids of the past. I really hated those. Okay, here we've got our Bronco body inside the bag. Boy, it's a small little guy. It's almost like an AMC Rambler size. There's our glass. And then we've got one big bag with the rest of our white parts in it. Looking nice. Ooh, the hood actually has open louvers. And then my favorite chrome, glorious chrome, much like the uh, Mobius kit with the um, grill with no backing on it. It's very nice, very realistic. And then we've got our nice, uh, what do you call these? Instructions, of course. And there's our decals inside. So that's everything. No tires, but we'll have to see what's going on. Anyway. 
I'll clear the box out of the way and then we'll examine our Ford Bronco. Has this ever happened to you? Oh, hey honey, I just came back from the hobby shop. You wouldn't believe what they had. They had this van here that's just exactly the same as how my dad's van was, but it's a Coca-Cola one and I want to build it and man, I can't wait to see what this looks like. And then you went downstairs to your workbench. All right, let's see what's in here. Oh man, this is the worst thing I ever got. Or maybe it went like this. Oh man, this is the best model kit I ever could have got. If you're looking for great model car unboxing review videos, don't forget to subscribe to us over at the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage found on YouTube. And I'll leave the link in the description below. And here we have our instruction sheet for our 73 Ford Bronco. And the only way that I know this kit is a 73 is because of the license plate decal in it. Uh, like I said, these are made from 66 to 77 and there's very little change. There's a, you know, like grill change and that's about it, but the rest stays the same. Okay, so opening up our instruction sheet. A nice hard crisp fold line in it. <laughs> Uh, we have, of course, all the things you need to know before you begin, as well as the history and this nice blueprinted drawing of the Ford. Okay. Wow. Inside, we have all our paints, painting guide, and then how to use your decals in here. And then over here, I know Ravel has been doing this lately, you have all the parts so you can go through and check all these things off to make sure you have them if you're missing any you can always phone to Ravel or whatever email text and get replacement parts I do believe look at that there's all 137 pieces all there I found the tires by the way so <laughs> James don't worry they were actually in the body shell if you uh, actually rewind this you can see Okay, anyway, here's our little V8 going in here. And as you can see, it does look pretty nice. So let's zoom in on the panels. So panel one shows our little 289 Ford inch small block going together, the little V8. You get right and left hand side with, of course, transmission molded in the back. And then your cylinder heads are going on there, as well as your oil pan. Then the valve covers and the intake manifold. Put the intake manifold on first, always because there's a little lip on the valve covers and if it goes over top the edge of the manifold and you do these first you you'll have fun trying to put the manifold on that that happened to me a few times okay let's take a look at panel two and here we have the front engine cover going on as well as the alternator i think this is there's a dotted line on top of it <laughs> ah, okay and then you've got a water hose coming down the bottom Oh yeah, that was the alternator with the bracket and everything. Then our pulleys go in to the three holes in the front of our engine. And the fiberglass fan, of course, going on there. Then we have our starter motor going in and the exhaust manifold. So i got to turn the page to see what happens next. The story of our engine block carries on in panels 3 and 4, where we get to witness the oil filter popping on the side of the block as well as the other exhaust manifold ha <laughs> ha there's our little coil gluing onto the engine block the carburetor and our distributor and finally the adventure of the engine wouldn't be complete if it didn't drop into the nicely detailed frame which it does so there you go our story of the engine has ended let's see what happens to our chassis next in panel five we have the back little bit going on to our frame and then our exhaust pipe mounts in. Now we can start to see where this is leading up to. There's our springs going in the back. And then what do we got here? A little case going on. Perhaps we have some front wheel drive coming up in our future. So there's a little thing going on to the back of our transmission. The plot thickens. The next piece is of panel seven. It's a drive shaft. And then our rear axle differential will go on here. You got a differential and a cover plate. It springs in and goes on the end of the drive shaft. Our adventure continues in panel eight here. 
is we get a brace that goes across and our shock absorber is going into the back here. Now we're getting up to the front of the car again in panel 9, or of course the SUV, I guess, sport utility vehicle. There's those Ford independent arms with the springs. This time they're going in straight. Like if you remember the Mobius 69 Ford, these are crossed over. Well, these, these ones go in straight. Panel 10 shows the shock absorbers going into the front. Panel 11, we get another axle in here. This is our front for a four-wheel drive. And the little uh, drive shaft goes into that transfer case. And then we have some little clips going in oh, to lock down the front axle. Panel 12 shows the steering linkage, go or the anti-sway bar, going in the front. And then our steering column going in down here. Panel 13 is showing more linkages going in, as well as more tie rods. And then we get into our wheels for section 14, a tire, a nice hubcap, a wheel, much the same as a Mobius wheel with the little fins going in, a metal axle pin, and then the front brake, and then the rear brake, or retainer maybe, and then uh, another metal pin, basically the same thing but for the rear. So make sure you look at the front and rear wheels, because remember the front one should have the spindle up front, and the back does not. Wrapping up panel 14, we see our wheels mounting onto the suspension components on our completed chassis with engine. Step 15 shows our bench seat getting put together for the rear. And these are armrests in here with the armrest supports, which pop onto the sides. And then our seat will drop down into here. Step 16 is optional. There's four holes in here that you can drill out. And then turning it over, you can add in your roll bar into here. Step 17 shows the front bucket seats being glued to the back part of the bucket seat. And then the bucket seats and the shift lever all go into the floorboards. Then we have our interior door panels as well as the tailgate going on to the back here. Next we'll show panels 18 and 19 at the same time here. So we have our dashboard and the pedals will glue onto the back. And then turning it over, we do have some decals going in here. Number 16, number 8, number 17, as well as 18 on the horn ring. Our steering wheel gl glues onto our steering wheel column, which all pops into the dash. Under hood, we have some more painting going on in here. And then our interior and dashboard hook up together and drop into the body. And finally, our frame and engine will drop into the body as well. Panel 20 is showing the fan shroud going onto the radiator and then onto the radiator wall here. And then all of this drops into the front of our engine bay with the radiator hose connecting on top of the radiator and into the engine. Panel 21 shows two different views of the air cleaner, which will glue on top of our carburetor, as well as our brake master cylinder gluing to our firewall here. So we have a 1971 version, which is the air cleaner with the snorkel coming straight out. And then for 73, you break the snorkel off with your saw and then re-glue it at about a 45 degree angle toward the front. Panel 22 is showing our grill with our headlights and turn signal lamps gluing on and then our grill and front bumper all glue onto the front of the car. Panel 23 is showing our brake lights gluing onto the back as well as some I guess it's a backup light going on to there, something to that effect. And then we have a decal going here for Ford, Ford lettering. And then, I'm not sure what these are, oh, that, okay, yeah, that's for the swing out for your spare tire, which is continued right here, the little gate clicking in, and then another little lamp or something going under. And then we've got our bumper going on the back, spare tires in two pieces, and then glues onto that frame. Step 25 shows our multi-piece windshield frame getting glued together. First you glue the rear view mirror in and then you paint around your glass here for the rubber molding. Pop it into the frame and then add on the windshield wipers. Then all of this glues up onto the body here. The side windows, door handles and other details going on there. Panel 26 shows our roof going on. The glass pops in and then this pops on the top. You do not need to glue this on. You can leave it off. 
And then 27, we have our rear view mirror here in two pieces, which is interesting. And then our hood dropping on. And of course, you don't glue that on, so you can open it up and see your nice engine. And finally, panel 28 shows all the decal locations going on. It says, do not dip decal number 26 in water. That would be a license plate one. Cut it out and just glue it on straight. And then there's our decal on the hood and all the nice little goodies on here. Special thanks to Jeff Trapp at Jeff's Bronco Graveyards in Birmingham, Michigan for all his help on this project. Very nice. And that completes our look at our 1971 to 1973 Ravel Ford Bronco. So now let's go down and take a look at those white plastic pieces. Back in July 2013, High River experienced a massive flood. Although many things were damaged and destroyed in the High River flood, we were able to save some of our products. Wait until you see what I have inside the Studebaker. In this video, we will restore one of them as best we can. I'm just going to open up the door here. These all got hit in the High River flood. And I managed to rescue as many as I could. Oh wow, is this car ever dirty? Now there's only one solution to fixing those car wheels, and that of course is repaint. Wow, that car looks so much better now. Welcome back, and here we have our nice little treat. This is our Ford Bronco body, ready to go into the jungle on a jungle safari. <laughs> I know it looks kind of funny there. Also in the bag was the roof, so you can see how it would be with the roof on. Anyway, we'll take a look at that in a minute. But for right now, look at our little Bronco here, how cute it is. Such a stubby little vehicle. It's of course it's like much like a little Jeep with the two doors on each side. There's the turn signal lights molded on, the nice molding here. Little hinges for the door, external hinges, not hidden. Go this way, you can see the nice Ford emblem right across the back lid. Let's see if the camera can catch it. I don't know. The little handle there. Little uh, dots right there. There's little mounting points for that swinging tailgate. Here we have two fuel uh, caps. That, that's what I kind of missed on in there. In the parts, anyway, door handles. Bunch of cool little things. It's a pretty basic little body, actually. Not much going on. A couple of mold marks underneath here, but I don't think there'll be a problem. And then in the engine bay, you got a battery molded in and a bunch of other little goodies. So, quite a lot of nice detail on there. Let's just move the body out of the way for a minute, since I was talking about the roof. So there it is. You got your molded in sun binders in the top. A little relief here for the window to fit in, top of the window. And then we've got our mold marks in there, which you'll have to take care of with a sandpaper or a number 16 hobby blade. But overall, pretty nice fit onto the body. As you can see, these two are meant to go together. But anyway, there is our excellent little Ford Bronco. Here's the first of our white pieces. And as you can see, here's the hood. And what's nice is these little louvers on the top actually go right through. You can see the gray underneath. There's our side door panels, which are always nice because with separate side molded door panels, you can make excellent detail like this rear real <laughs> window winder. Shoot. And here's our first white part tree. And as you can see, it's really excellently done. The hood here has real vents on it where you can see underneath, like right to the mat. And then here's our side door panels. And these are all molded separately, which is nice on your detail because like this window winding crank, you can make it look like the real thing instead of just a blob like in some of those tub models of earlier years. This kit, of course, is quite new. Uh, there's our um, pedals here, our brake, our clutch, and sorry, our gas, our clutch, and our brake. The seat backs and the windows frame here. 
So let's just bring this up. Let's turn her over. You can see some nice ribby detail underneath here on the hood. A couple little mold marks I can find, but again, not too bad. You can clean them up. So yeah, pretty decent for a first look at the white parts. And as we continue, we see our little 289 Ford engine here. With a lot of the details, valve covers, cylinder heads, all the other goodies you expect under these things. There's our front suspension, and the transfer cases, and rear differentials, and look at all the shock absorbers and linkages and everything. This is pretty crazy. So let's just bring this up to the camera and see how cool and detailed these are. Look at that radiator. Of course, does it have a mesh? Oh yeah. <laughs> There's our rear tire. Proper little mounting on the back there for that swing and tailgate. I'll just turn it over. Detail on both sides of the radiator. Very nicely done. I don't see too much problems here. So we'll carry on. Continue with our suspension components and body pieces. Here's our frame right here. Looks like a little separate gas tank or something off to the side. There's another gas tank back there. Spring shackles come across here, and then all the front components will go in there. There's springs there, our mufflers, steering. Those are the little brackets, I believe, for the swinging gate. Again, lots of nice detail on here. Let's bring it up to the camera. You can see all the cool effects. Yeah, very nice. If you were building this Bronco, how would you build it? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, we have our chassis pan, Sassafras. Anyway, there's our dashboard. You can see how cool it is, a single gauge right there, and then radio and everything else. Then we've got our roll bar, optional roll bar, of course, our steering wheel and steering column, and then our little back seat. Um, there's his armrests and the shifter. And talk about attention to detail, here is the reverse side of the tailgate, and it has Ford uh, impressed in here in reverse, much like it would be on the real tailgate panel, with of course the raised Ford letters on the other side. I mean, look at that. That's pretty cool on there. There's our dashboard. It's all the gauges and the little vents. And then we'll just turn this over. You can see our floor pan here. A little bit of a detail on there, a little rough. There's quite a few little uh, mold marks in here. Some of them are being under the seat, which is always nice. I do believe, yeah, these are under the seat as well, so you don't really need to take care of your mold marks there. But still very nice overall and a very well detailed kit. And here we have our final white components. These are smaller parts trees. Uh, sorry, James, this rear or axle here popped out. It was like that in the box, just so you know. <laughs> okay, so we got our seats here, and they've got a little tuck and roll pattern on them. And then there's more of the seat backs and the little armrest pieces. And, of course, the sides of our roll bar. And here's our front and rear wheels. The fronts have the little um, things sticking out of them, and the rears do not. There's our air cleaner. And remember, for 71, it's like this, but for 73, you break it out and move that here. A little snorkel. There is our intake manifold, the wheel backs, rubber hoses, and, of course, our two differentials. So I don't think I'll turn all these parts over because they're kind of self-explanatory. One thing I find interesting is now a lot of the model car manufacturers are going for these ribs along the side here. I don't know if you can see that too well. There you go. It's kind of ribs to lock into the tires, so that's quite a departure from how they were originally with the front and rear wheel backs. Now we get into my favorite part, which of course is the chrome tree. And the chrome in here is basically for a stock Ford Bronco. There's no like side over here with like custom headers and drag bars and all kinds of cool things. But that being said, Now we have my favorite part of all the parts trees, which of course is the chrome parts tree. And as you can see, this is basically a stock Ford Bronco, 71 to 73. If this was a drag racing type one or something optional, they would have the 
parts tree come out here in this corner and have like drag headers and all kinds of cool chrome bits in here but I can do deal with the stock stuff because it's done really really well just like the louvers on the hood here we have the individual grill with see-through right there which is cool looks like a real grill and not just one big chrome blob of plastic there's of course our windshield wipers and a whole bunch of really small details, door handles, rear tail lights, which you have to paint with your Tamiya Clear. Little dog dish hubcaps for the Ford. Yeah, oh, so these ones have holes in them. Those might be for the front, for the front spindle to stick through. That elongated spindle. There's our front chrome grill, as you can see. See through. That is pretty cool. So remember when you paint this model, you want to paint the back of the firewall here black so that it blacks out and you can actually see the grill bars and not like the blue paint or red paint or however you're going to paint your Bronco through it. There are some mold marks there but again I think that fits pretty tight to the body so you probably won't see them. But again very nice chrome work very clean and crisp. Next we have our glass components and as you can imagine on the Bronco there isn't really any curved glass in this thing at all. It's all pretty flat panels like a Model T Ford. Uh, here we have I believe the windshield and then the tail window, rear window, pardon me. Front headlights, little turn signals, side windows and the side windows for the extra roof. So basically they're pretty flat and plain but they're gonna look good in this model kit for sure. Next we have some pretty cool little off-road tires. These ones are generic. There's no Firestone, Goodyear, whatever you want to put on here, Uniroyal, nothing like that. But they do have this nice cool tread on here and it is directional. It's uh, spinning into the front as you can see here. So make sure you know the right way to put them on. Don't have them going on backwards. Anyway, beautiful cool brand new wheels from Ravel wheels. Next up we have these amazing little tires. Now they are not a Firestone Uniroyal Goodyear or anything like that. They are generic. There's absolutely no names on here. No name brand. <laughs> but anyway you can see the cool tread on here. They are directional so they're all sort of spiraling into the front. So you want to make sure that you don't put these things on backwards on your model. Finally we have our decal sheet and what kind of threw me off in this video is that here we have some nice RS6895 license plates which say Colorado 1973. Now, I didn't know that this is actually a 71 Bronco because I went off the license plates on the box but as our instructions show, if you have that little snorkel on your air cleaner in one direction, it's a 71. And if you have it in a different direction, it's a 73. And there aren't any 71 license plates in here. So if you can find some from another thing, you could build uh, both ways. Here we have black Ford letters, as well as white Ford letters. And there's a nice white Ford pinstripe on here. Then we get all our upholstery pattern, which is really cool. Even some for the interior panels. And then we have some nice little round decals. This is the speedometer. And then we've got some other gauges and things. Can't really see from my angle. Oh, these all say Ford. Different colors, red, silver, black. A different style of Ford lettering. Maybe one's for 73, one's for 71. I'm not sure. You guys might know this a lot better. If you do, write it in the comments down below. Then we have Bronco logos as well as our air cleaner decals and some under the hood stuff. This decal sheet looks really nice, and it should be a joy to put on. And that completes our look at the 1973 Ford Bronco by Ravel. And if any of you have built this amazing kit, please let us know in the comment section down below. How did you like it, and what color did you paint it? You can also share your photos with us at our Facebook page, Monster Hobbies. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review and thank you once again to our good friend James for loaning us this model so that we can see what's inside. And if you'd like to see our current available model kits, check it out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. 
pound that notification bell so that every time we make a brand new video, you are the first ones to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy camping! Well, I think that brings another great video to a close. It was real fun making it, and I hope you all learned something from it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave those down in the descriptions below. And if you enjoyed watching these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Pound the notification button down below so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. If you'd like to shop with us at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check out our web address, www.monster-hobbies.ca. Again, I'll leave it in the description below. If you want to support us on Patreon, because, well, YouTube is... It, we are monetized. YouTube does pay us, but it's sort of up and down based on views. If you'd like to support us with something a little more steady, visit our Patreon account, like these great people here have done. Thank you all for your support over on Patreon. It's uh, pretty easy. I'll leave the link for that in the description below as well. Again, if you want to share some great stuff with us, do it on our Facebook page. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.